in the same community, the same projects? I'm like, what's the odds of that? Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top insane internet theories about Unsolved Mysteries, Volume 2. There are so many things we need to find out. Jack's murder has all these facts around it that just naturally confound. Could this woman be a, a secret agent from some sort of intelligence service from one or another country, or that she might have been an assassin? For this list, we're looking at the wildest theories online in response to the second volume of this hit Netflix reboot. Do you feel there's any truth to these, or are we just clutching at conspiracies? Let us know in the comments. Number 7. Andre's disappearance was unrelated to the others. I won't wish this on nobody, ever. Ever. What happened to Monique Rivera and her one-month-old son Andre was heartbreaking. After becoming acquainted with two women, Monique went shopping with them with her son in tow. The next day, her body was discovered with Andre nowhere in sight. While it happened in the same neighborhood, many believe that his disappearance was unrelated to the fates of Christopher Dansby and Shane Walker. In the same community, the same projects? I'm like, what's the odds of that? In those cases, both children were approached by older children asking to play and later vanished when their guardians were distracted. The details in Andre's case seem too different to be considered part of a kidnapping trifecta. Frustrating, it really is. I mean, you know, especially when there's not a lead. I mean, there's no leads to go on. Number six, staff at the Plaza Hotel were in on the kill. Even if it was decades ago, you'd think that a five-star hotel that catered to celebrities and royalty would have procedures in place to stop just anyone slipping in. There are so many things we need to find out. And yet that's exactly what Jennifer Fairgate did. She entered under a false name and was never asked to show any form of identification, even though it was standard practice for foreigners to show their passports. And we did not find any kind of ID card, not even her passport. And that's very rare because mainly people have to have passport to come to Norway. As if that's not enough, following Jennifer's apparent suicide, police could find zero security footage of the day that Jennifer arrived at the front desk. The hotel had pretty tight security, and they had cameras. But then, unfortunately, there are no information in the police documents about the police searching these cameras. So to me, it doesn't look like they, uh, they ever searched the cameras. Given the other theories floating around about Jennifer's occupation, it's not too much of a stretch to wonder if some staff members were involved. I think this story is so weird. There are so many questions and so few answers. Number five, Ohio police conspired to let Lester Eubanks walk free. Either there's some credibility to this theory or certain factions of the Ohio police force in the 1970s were beyond incompetent. This, this guy shouldn't have even been out. Despite being an infamous sexual predator and murderer on death row, Lester Eubanks managed to worm his way into an honor program, all thanks to a silver tongue that apparently won over the guards. What privileges did this furlough grant him? Three hours of unguarded freedom so he could go Christmas shopping. What were they hoping to accomplish with this absurd program of taking up a, a child murderer to go Christmas shopping and not even having a guard stand beside him the entire time? And what did he do? Made a break for it, of course. No one really knows how he escaped from the immediate area, Great Southern Shopping Center, but uh, I don't think he could have done that if this was a spur-of-the-moment decision by him. I think there had to have been planning. I think he had to have made some kind of arrangements in advance. While the whole thing sounds like a ridiculous oversight, what really rubs salt in the wounds is that those in charge failed to run up a warrant for his arrest allowing Eubanks to continue to live his life as a free man decades on. Number four, Joanne Romaine was murdered. Despite police officially ruling it as a suicide, the questionable circumstances surrounding Joanne Romaine's death have both her family and the internet up in arms. Yeah, we were devastated, but we didn't stop. Now let's figure out how it happened and why it happened. While investigators deemed that Joanne had drowned herself by walking into the ice-strewn Lake St. Clair, her daughters think otherwise. There was no suicide note. She was never on any medications. My mom 
always was. And as she got older, it became more of a devout Catholic, going to church more than just on Sundays, you know, going during the week. If you're a devout Catholic, suicide is against all beliefs. Not only was Joanne a dedicated Catholic and afraid of her own shadow, but further inspection from outside sources revealed some rather baffling evidence. Joanne filled her car up shortly before she allegedly took her own life. The Coast Guard received a notice about her 30 minutes before she went missing, and the autopsy showed that the cause of death was dry drowning. Plus, as we'll go into later, there had been some family conflict prior to her disappearance. People within the family, people close to the family. I can't say that right now. Number three, Jennifer Fairgate was a hitman or undercover agent. While the fact that the hotel didn't ask for identification is odd enough, the true twists in the Jennifer Fairgate case start with her body being discovered in her room. She had sweaters, she had trench coats, she had many clothes for her upper body, but nothing from, uh, from the waist and down. Her clothes had all the tags cut out, she had practically nothing in terms of belongings, the gun that she had supposedly shot herself with had its serial number removed, and there was nothing in the way of gun residue or blood spatter on her hands. Add to that the fact that even with DNA testing, Jennifer is practically a ghost in the system with no clues to her real identity. This has led many to believe that she didn't commit suicide, but was actually executed due to her role in some secret or dubious profession. Could this woman be a secret agent from some sort of intelligence service from one or another country, or that she might have been an assassin? Number two, John Wheeler had a manic episode. The death of this government insider shocked the world back in 2010, given how highly respected he was as a chairman of the Vietnam Veterans Memorial Fund. Jack's murder has all these facts around it that just naturally confound. So who would want John Wheeler dead? While many were quick to point the finger at unknown assassins, after reviewing the final hours of his life, others have come to a different conclusion. Wheeler had bipolar disorder, and apparently had a bad sense of direction. He was captured on camera attempting to access a parking garage, even though his car was elsewhere, and wandering around office buildings. Jack is in a completely different state than he was in when he was at the pharmacy. He appears in great distress. He's agitated. He's got one shoe off and the other shoe in his hand. Some believe he had a manic episode, became disoriented, and sought shelter in a dumpster. The theory that he crawled into a dumpster to stay warm seems completely preposterous to me. I mean, in part because of the medical examiner's report that, you know, it concluded that he was murdered. It could explain how he ended up in the landfill and how he sustained blunt force trauma. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Tim Matuk was involved in Joanne Romaine's death. I told the police my number one suspect was a cousin that was a cop. His name was Tim Matuk. Joanne's daughters have come up with quite a list of possible suspects over the years. And while the police may have cleared them, that hasn't stopped speculation. Joanne's brother John confessed that he owed a lot of money to certain people due to business blunders, while her ex-husband David was shown to have been incredibly angry after their separation. And so you, there's always that in the back of your mind, like, could he have done it something? But I wasn't really sure, but still part of him on the list. However, right at the top of her list is Joanne's estranged cousin Tim, who was allegedly seen with her on the night of the disappearance by a witness. Moreover, following a heated argument, Joanne had told her daughter Michelle that if anything ever happened to her, Tim would be the one they should investigate. I could hear him yelling, but I couldn't hear what he said. And I heard her say, leave me and my family alone, never call me again. She hung up on him. And at that moment, she turned to me and said, if something happens to me, look to Tim. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.